What's going on guys? Welcome in. My name is Dr. James Cellini. I'm a board certified practicing veterinary neurologist and neurosurgeon. You've probably heard by now that the country of Norway has recently put a ban on the breeding of English Bulldogs and King Charles Cavalier Spaniels. This news came out a couple weeks ago and I wanted to talk about it, make an episode about it and go over why they banned these two breeds, why they chose these two breeds and not other breeds the specific problems that affect these breeds and whether or not this ban was the right thing to do and if I think it'll actually accomplish something. So hopefully I'm gonna be able to summarize all of that. That's a lot to get through in just about a 10 minute or so episode. But before I do that, if you don't mind hitting the like and subscribe button, that would be great. It helps with the algorithm and helps me grow the channel. Thank you very much ahead of time. Now let's get started. with this topic because there's a lot to talk about. So guys, quick disclaimer, A, I am not hating on any individual dog or any breed. What I am hating on is the suffering of these dogs. Individually, these dogs are great. They have amazing little personalities and I do enjoy working with them. But what I hate is their suffering and how much they have to endure through quite often their very short abbreviated life. So I want to focus on the dislike of their suffering uh, and also just let you know that I really do enjoy these dogs as individuals. They're very sweet dogs. Before I get into the actual legislation, why don't I go through and summarize the problems facing both of these breeds, English Bulldogs and Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. English Bulldogs and Cavaliers are what we call brachycephalic, meaning over time and through intentional breeding over many generations, notice I use the word intentional, their noses have become flatter and flatter and they've become what we call a brachycephalic conformation. Now, you may be surprised to hear this, but it turns out a dog actually kind of needs its nose in order to lead a healthy, comfortable, normal life. Mmm, <laughs> isn't sleep apnea cute? Now, as if these respiratory issues weren't bad enough on their own, over 90% of the English Bulldogs have a spinal malformation affecting the curvature of their spine. This is called scoliosis or kyphosis. So almost every English Bulldog has a spinal malformation just as part of their inherent being. If you think this problem is relegated to unethical or backyard breeders and is somehow uh, not inclusive of ethical breeders, go ahead and check the AKC breed standard for the English Bulldog. In the breed standard, you're gonna see a lot of words like very and extremely. So for instance, under the face and muzzle section, the face measured from the front of the cheekbone to the tip of the nose should be extremely short. So here lies a huge part of this problem, right? The AKC lists the breed standard face and muzzle for the English Bulldogs. Face needs to be extremely short and the muzzle needs to be very short. We're using terms like extremely and very to describe conformational changes that we're putting on these pets. We're simply focusing on some arbitrary breed standard that was set forth, I don't even know how long ago, and this doesn't even remotely take into account the well-being of these pets. So frankly, we need to ignore this, and that's what the country of Norway is kind of starting to think too. Now, Cavaliers, on the other hand, while being brachycephalic, do not typically suffer from the same level and the same frequency of respiratory issues like Bulldogs do. This is probably because while yes, they are flat faced, they have a little bit more of a muzzle typically compared to your typical Bulldog. They're also slighter of stature, meaning they don't have as much soft tissue and giant head and neck uh, sort of conformations. And that contributes to difficulty breathing and these sorts of airway problems. So we don't see that problem quite as much in Cavaliers. The main issues with Cavaliers as this ruling has kind of brought to light is heart disease, and a condition called syringomyelia. Almost every cavalier will eventually develop heart disease that is ultimately fatal in the breed, and almost every cavalier is born with a skull malformation called a Chiari malformation that leads to fluid pockets building up in the spinal cord that can cause a wide array of symptoms from weakness to chronic pain. And if every cavalier comes out with these sorts of predispositions, then obviously that's a huge welfare concern for that breed as well. Now this is all as a very brief backdrop to the situation that unfolded a week ago where Norway effectively banned, they passed legislation to prevent further breeding of English Bulldogs and Cavaliers. 
The court essentially ruled that breeding bulldogs and cavaliers violates what's called the Animal Welfare Act, which requires breeders to breed only healthy dogs. And since these breeds are so inherently unhealthy, the court ruled we should not be creating them. Now, in general, I don't like the idea of government interference and outright government bans on stuff. Get off my lawn. But I think I can make an exception because I gotta tell you, I, I am tending to agree with Norway and their ruling here, especially with English Bulldogs. Now, with Cavaliers, I think there's a debate to be had because I don't see, at least in my personal practice experience, I don't see quite as much suffering going on constantly with Cavaliers like I do with English Bulldogs. But English Bulldogs have such a tough life. They have such a um, difficult way of existence, if you want to think of it that way. Um, again, it just, how, just imagine being born with a body that can't really move the way you want it to, can't breathe the way you want it to and very easily creates a situation where you're in chronic pain and discomfort for your entire life. Um, it's, just, it's just not fair to create animals that are in that state. And to give an illustration of what I'm talking about, this is a very common clinical finding that I'm sure every vet and every vet tech watching this has come across before in their career. But when we have bulldogs recovering from anesthesia, you'll find that they'll sit with their tracheal tube in their airway just as they wake up, and they'll be kind of looking around and alert and almost fully recovered from anesthesia. Now, can you imagine something being in your airway and not freaking out and wanting to pull it out immediately? But the reason Bulldogs don't do that is because this is the first time in their life, or maybe the only time in their life, that they are breathing completely unrestricted and completely freely. And you see how relaxed they are when they're awake but have a breathing tube down their trachea. Um, I think that is probably the most striking thing when I see it to tell me that these animals are inherently malformed and the way they are, the way they are made, is not good enough and it just leads to too much suffering. Now one important part of this Norwegian law that I want to mention is that it leaves room for a process called outcrossing. This is a process by which instead of uh, breeding bulldogs together to, to create more and more bulldoggy looking bulldogs, um, they are still allowed, breeders are still allowed to pair bulldogs and cavaliers with other types of dogs that will produce less extreme body modifications. And I think this is a great thing. I think this is the process, this process of outcrossing. This is the process by which we need to start moving away from current breeds and their extreme body shape into a more sensible body shape and get away from the things that the AKC and other Kennel Club breed standards list that we need to do. I think those things are abhorrent, frankly. I think we need to start getting more sensible about what makes a healthy dog and what makes a happy dog. Or think of it this way, if you asked a dog, hey, would you prefer to have a nose or prefer to not have a nose? What do you think they would say? Now, as you can imagine, this legislation has ruffled a lot of feathers and caused a huge outpouring of responses, both in support and against this new law passing. Both breeders and breed purists and breed enthusiasts in general have voiced a lot of opposition to this law, both in America, Norway, and elsewhere throughout the world. Recently, the Bulldog Club of America had this to say as an official response to this legislation passing. This week, a district court in Oslo, Norway, concluded that it is contrary to the country's Animal Welfare Act to breed Bulldogs and Cavalier King Charles Spaniels and that breeding of these dogs must stop immediately. The court claims that Bulldogs and Cavaliers have major health challenges and further breeding is in violation of the Norwegian Animal Welfare Act. The Dog Club of America's position continues to be that the breed in the right hands has proved to be, through many decades, to be healthy, normal companions for thousands of owners who have chosen Bulldogs as their preferred breed. I would not call that a true statement. The Bulldog, like any other breed, is not inherently unhealthy when well-bred. Please define what well-bred even means. The Bulldog of today is healthier than ever. Literally false. What has changed? The Bulldog Club of America and its member clubs have diligently worked to maintain the breed standard by breeding for good health, confirmation, and temperament. But that's the case, why is it that so many of these dogs still have these problems that I've already mentioned earlier in the video? We continuously promote the health and welfare of the breed. The Bulldog Club of America provides education to members, judges, and the public through seminars, publications, videos, social media groups, and participation in AKC Meet the Breeds via the website. ACA cannot control rogue breeders from producing deformed dogs. These dogs are not bred to our official standards and are at risk of inherited diseases and malformations. The official standards already put these dogs at risk of malformations and inherited diseases. We've already established that. That is well known. The BCA mourns for the Norwegian breeders whose years of dedication to the Bulldog and the Cavalier Spaniels have been destroyed. 
maybe try mourning for the actual animals themselves. Two breeds which have existed for hundreds of years are in danger of being wiped out. Again, these breeds were created by people. They didn't just naturally, spontaneously occur. Um, so they were naturally created. And when you talk about wiping them out, all we're really talking about is outcrossing them and changing their body modifications to a more sensible form. This isn't like some sort of mass extinction level event. I, I think they're trying to phrase it. The BCA strongly recommends that people searching for a bulldog should research the breed and only use breeders who adhere to the breed standard. In the United States, resources for breeder referral health information and how to join your local bulldog club can, we, can be found at bulldogclubofamerica.org. Now, I don't know about you, but in reading this, I get the strong sense that the main priority from the Bulldog Club of America is that of breed purity rather than actual welfare of the dog. I don't see much in this statement that tells me that they're concerned about the welfare of the dog. Secondly, there is a very common fallacy at play here, and that is creating the straw man argument of the ever-present unethical backyard road breeder who is causing the problems and not the actual breed themselves. This is a very common fallacy that I see when arguing about the general health of purebred dogs. At some point, you just have to look at what the base model normal to the breed standard dog is and really objectively say to yourself, is this a healthy animal? And in the case of an English Bulldog, I would say absolutely not. In the case of a Cavalier, I would say, mm, I think I need to research it more and I'm not 100% sure but there is a lot of suffering that goes on with Cavaliers. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel Club of America issued a similar statement that I won't read for you because it basically brings up the same concerns as the Bulldog Club. As a final effort to drive home my point that the inherent breed standard of English Bulldogs is quite unhealthy, let's check out Winter the Bulldog who won the 2021 National Dog Show non-sporting group. Hello. <laughs> The bulldog. Did you happen to notice Winter's nose? Now, obviously I'm not her veterinarian. I didn't examine her and this is not a formal diagnosis, but her nostrils appear what we call stenotic or narrow to me. This is based on a grading scale that was published a few years ago to help objectify when dogs' nostrils are too narrow. And this is a very common part of brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome. But besides that, just looking at this dog, this is again, this is a dog one best in show for the non-sporting non group. You can see from her side profile that she doesn't have a nose. So you can see from her side profile right there when I freeze the video that her nose is so smushed into her face. And you can see the wrinkles going over her nose. That There's just, there's nothing natural about this. And I don't know why we're celebrating this like it's some sort of Hunger Games event. Trotting out these dogs that are just malformed over generations and generations. It's just... It's honestly so sad to me because as a veterinarian, I know what these dogs go through and I think I have a better idea than most as to the degree of suffering and just the lifelong pain that these dogs are in um, due to the way that they are made. It's just, it's so frustrating to watch these sorts of dog shows. So yeah, in summary, I think I do support Norway's decision to ban the breeding of English Bulldogs with the allowance for outcrossing the breed to get their features a little bit more under control and back to what is a more normally shaped dog. Um, I do think this is gonna have some repercussions and start to extend to other countries like the UK, um, other European countries, and perhaps the US. I would be all for a ban on the current making of English Bulldogs the way they're currently constructed with an emphasis towards outcrossing. I'm not afraid to say that um, because I think it would be better for their welfare in general. I think it would lead to a much healthier and much happier, comfortable pet. And I think other concerns like breed preservation and breed purity take a much farther back seat behind the comfort of the animal and their overall welfare. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave a comment below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me and why. I know it's a very controversial topic and it gets into a lot of like political stuff too, which obviously I didn't want to get into in my video. But um, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you.